Thank you for joining TRT for Warriors. I'm here with Dr. Eric Fetty. So I was looking in your background, so I didn't know that you were an ER doc. Is that how you got started in in doctoring, or what's kind of like your or origin story? Yeah, no, I love the origin story thing because I'm a big superhero superhero geek, so that's perfect. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's how I got my start in medicine. Um, I did an ER. I was the ER. I was an ER doc for many years. I did that. That's kind of where I got my start in medicine because I've always been fascinated with the human body and how it works and how to make it better and how to heal it, etc. And I just and I just love the acuity of ER and um, being able to kind of take care of anything and everything that walked through the door. You know, the acute emergencies, the the mundane stuff, and um, that's my thing. I did that for a while, and then um, I had uh, oh, wow. had a. Um, an ER doctor that I knew, a friend of my dad's actually, he told me, you know, gosh, back in high school, he's like, look, man, he's like, ER is great, but he's like, can't do it forever. He's like, uh, you got to always have a plan B, you know, and I just kept that in the back of my head. So yeah. I, <laughs> I met another doc and he, he was starting up a clinic and again, totally different. It was like a, a vein clinic and cos we did cosmetics and stuff like that and got into oh, like, really? did it, did like, got into like, like stem cell therapy, PRP stuff and um, oh, wow. did that for a while this was on the front of stem cells, right? We did this was like very, very clunky at the time, right? Yeah. This is back when, um, it was mostly just blood, the blood stuff. It's called PRP or platelet rich plasma. Um, and, and then I started getting into a little bit of the hormone stuff. So I thought at first I was hesitant and I'm like, but then I jumped into it. Cause I, you know, I'm, I'm always been involved with nutrition and fitness and, you know, I wrestled and did sports and martial arts. So I've always been interested in how to oh, wow. make the body better. So I was like, Oh, let's check this out. So started learning about it and loved it. And then, you know, in the ER, I, unfortunately I see, you know, I saw people at their worst. Right. And, um, yeah. but I saw a lot of people that were in bad shape that could have been avoided if they just would have taken better care of themselves. I mean, seeing like young guys, like younger than you, like coming in on a list of, you know, 10 medications, they're overweight, they're diabetic. I'm like, dude, what you could have prevented all this. I'm like, how do you, st you know? So that's kind of why I got on the preventive side. So I got, big time into the, into the nutrition, the fitness and the hormones, because by doing things as naturally as possible, you can with just with lifestyle changes, you can make yourself better and get the changes you want and prevent all these diseases from happening. Um, so and that was, that was really cool. I really started going down the rabbit hole then. So I got into hormones and hormone optimization I got into peptide therapies. Um, now I, and, I wanted to ask you about that. What's the, um, regular or like the, the association for that right now to get trained as a doc for hormones or peptides or peptides. There's, yeah. there's a lot of training out there. Um, I mean, obviously the, so for the, like the hormone side, there's several or big organizations that do it. I, I originally, originally trained with the group, uh, the, um, American anti aging medical group, uh, through Senogenics. And then I trained with world link medical and got certified through them. They're probably the best the best out there. It's all evidence-based, just thousands of scientific studies backed by tons of data. Um, Dr. Neil Ruzia does an awesome job leading that. And then peptides. Peptides are kind of new, obviously, in the last number of years. I started off getting certified through the International Peptide Society, um, but that group is, I think, kind of now no longer functioning. The, the leader of that, Dr. Seeds, left and started his own organization, so I'm a fellow in that group now, or, or pending fellow status, called um, the SSRP. Um, so that's probably the premier organization. It's all about cellular medicine and a lot of peptides, but a lot of um, nutritional uh, strategies as well. So that's that's kind of what I've been doing. I want to ask a technical question on that. So obviously, when we talk about peptides, either amino acids, they're created in the gut and in the body, and technically most of them are not patentable. Correct. Now, when we talk about peptides that are not patentable, but various compounding pharmacies can manufacture them <laughs> how do you as a doctor prescribe peptides yeah so it's been a moving target of late especially in the last year and a half two years um you know you're right same with hormones they're they're biologic products they're peptides are made in the body like insulin is a peptide it's a protein molecule right and typically oh, you know really? you know 50, 50 amino acids uh 25 amino acids you know somewhere in that range you know anything more than 100 amino acids is a, is a protein so um uh, peptides are natural and so similar to hormones like testosterone estrogen and progesterone they're natural products so you can't patent them and, and that's kind of why 
you know, you don't hear a lot of on the, in the traditional medical world because, you know, unfortunately, if you listen, it's all about politics and economics. Unfortunately, I could, I could go on a rant about uh, the world of medicine and, uh, big pharma and, and the FDA and how, um, oh, let's just say it's not the, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. Let's just say that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you can't patent them. So, but you can still prescribe them, you know, as physicians, we're allowed to prescribe, you know, anything we want. A lot of medications are written off label, right? If you look up a drug, for example, you look up, you know, whatever, uh, propranolol, you know, it has its indications for X, Y, Z, but you can prescribe it for other things too, off label. And that's completely legitimate, legal, and supported by all the medical societies, um, the code of ethics, et cetera. Um, in fact, most medications are 80% of them are written for off-label uses, like propranolol is written for migraine headaches, um, et cetera. So same thing here with, with hormones and with peptides, you can prescribe them. We can prescribe anything you want, as, obviously, as long as it's safe. Uh, and there's, and, and of course, with hormones, especially, there's tons of data supporting its safe use. Peptides are newer, but there's, again, there's a lot of data and su- supporting scientific literature to back up its use. Um, but you're right, big, the big pharma is kind of trying to put the kibosh on because, you know, they don't like any competition. So they're trying to trying to squash it out and trying to uh, they typically get them through compounding pharmacies. Um, same, same with the hormones, um, because they can make them. And all the ones I use and my colleagues use are all, you know, they're all legitimate. They're all inspected by the FDA. They're, they pass all the approvals. They're just like a regular pharmacy, but they, they have more uh, flexibility because they can compound certain strengths. Like, for example, if you get testosterone at the pharmacy, you can only get, you know, X amount of concentration and it's this, the commercial brand. So of course, big pharma marks it up, you know, 3000 times. So whereas the compounding pharmacy, if you want to make a different strength, slightly a little bit less strong or mix it with uh, some amino acids, or you, you can get a little more creative and of course it's safe. Um, you can do that. So it's a little more flexible and it's, it's, um, and that's how you do it. So we typically go through the compounding pharmacies. I still use commercial pharmacies for a lot of things too, but, um, the compounders are, have a little bit more flexibility. So, uh, again, everything's you know, you know, safe, legitimate, backed up by science. These all these pharmacies are inspected, approved, certified, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, we can prescribe anything we want to. Um, obviously, we're not you know prescribe something as dangerous or, or unethical. But that that's kind of how it works. And a lot of these guys have growth hormone uh, deficiencies, and then of course they have their cortisol is out of whack, their testosterone's in the dump, their thyroid's in the dumper. So these can all be corrected, modified. Sometimes it just it, it might be mild, and you can correct it with nutritional strategies and supplementation. But oftentimes they need hormone uh, optimization therapy, uh, and they can do wonders for these guys and gals. Now you know, so you know, kind of what I was getting at is that whole, you know, kind of post-acute phase, and everything that I've saw is all this wait 90 days until the full effects of TPI yeah. and CTE <clears throat> takes effect. Yeah. And, and me as like a, a consulting drug, you know, kind of guy throw money at a problem or in, you know, in this context, throw hormones at a problem and solve the, you know, the underlying thing. When I hear that, it rubs me the wrong way. Like, why would you wait for a problem, you know, to run the blood, see what you can do. But I, I guess would there be any, so say if someone's like almost at a suboptimal level, or at, okay, so even if the testosterone is tanked in that you know post-acute phase, is it better to wait that ninety days, or what is that strategy there? I, I'm kind of confused by it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if if you're if the acute stuff is is in the clear, you know, if you've got obviously you know trauma and bleeding damage, yeah, you want to wait, you know, you want to get get that taken care of first. But yeah, I mean, within the first couple of weeks, if if they're fine, they're home, yeah, test it, you know, but. I think there's some data, that, you know, studies saying, okay, give it, give it some time. It might just self-correct. If you whack your head, you know, maybe it'll just, everything will kind of, it's just an acute phase and it'll pass and it may go back to normal. So you don't want to rush something you don't need to. So there is some truth to that. Um, however, if someone's like clearly symptomatic and their levels are terrible, I mean, yes, just yeah. correct them and then maybe give them a trial for three months of, of, you know, and then, then you can maybe wean them off and see how they are. Maybe they've recovered and they don't need it anymore. A lot of guys do that just fine, but some will need lifelong therapy. Um, you know, there's some studies like the protect study that looked at like, for example, like progesterone and some of these other hormones to that initially showed to uh, improve some of these uh, TBI damage to the brain. Then some of the, the secondary studies showed some kind of equivocal uh, results. So um, I don't think there's harm in treating things right away, but it, again, it depends on the clinical scenario. Like if it's something that, yeah. you know, you, you know, wait a couple weeks and see what happens. There's not gonna be any harm in that. I mean, if you wait and it, and it, and it self rectifies then you're in the clear, but you could still fix it, but it's not going to get, if it's bad, 
you know, it's going to get better. It's going to, or it's not going to get better. If it, if it doesn't, then you fix it. So it's not like you have to run. That was my kind of initial gut feeling. And also, you know, we have these, you know, H, uh, HCG and GNRH, um, you know, medicines that can uh, master reset um, the glands and then push down the other hormones and, and work that way. So you don't even necessarily need to use you know, the other hormones that are down regulated. You can use the top stuff and use that first. But it just didn't sound right to me. And also I'm in these CTE groups and they're all basically doing everything backwards. Yeah. Well, okay. If you have TBI and you want to prevent it from becoming CTE, <laughs> well then you just replace the hormones. Correct. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. Like you said, you can you can give it a boost, like you said, with an ACG. Maybe you could do some secretagogues or some peptides to augment your body's growth hormone response and, and keep the natural pathways flowing and just kind of give it a gentle boost and then let them recover. And then and then you can wean them off and give them a trial. Or if it's not working, yeah, then you could take it to the next level and maybe they need testosterone or thyroid hormone or whatever. But for sure, yeah, you definitely push those pathways in a natural way and, and see how they respond. Yeah, I, I agree with that completely. I wanted to ask you about it because you're the only ER doc that I know of, other than Dr. Joe Clark, um, who does hormones as a job. And there's a missing problem. Right? And, and Dr. Mark Gordon, right, he gets lost in the sauce and all the fancy stuff. And he's thinking long term and big societal stuff. But yep. he, he has a problem, in my opinion, bringing it down to what you can do post acute phase. Right. And I agree with him. His like major process is right, but then he doesn't have anything in that middle ground. And I, it, it's just, nobody's ever talked about it really. And, and, and we're, there's a lacking of where ER docs come in line with functional medicine mm -hmm. and it's just not merged together yet. Right. Right. It is, it is definitely a gray area. And yeah, Mark Gordon is the guy I was referring to earlier. So I'm familiar with his stuff. I've taken some of his studied a lot of his work and stuff too. So um, and there's a lot, there's a lot out there, that's for sure. And, 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 you know, just like everything in medicine, there's no cookbook strategy. Everyone's different. So, you know, you have to treat everyone, every, one case may be completely different from another, but, um, but I agree. Yeah, I think that was one of my big, uh, my big questions for you as well. So when we're talking about hormone therapy, we pretty much have come down to this, you know, look at the, look at the ranges. And which I debunked the ranges a couple of weeks ago. I actually emailed Dr. Travison, who created the range that we're using, that 300 to 900 range. And I asked him, I was like, okay, so where did this number come from? And then why are we using it? He's like, oh, it's an epidemiological you know, range that we use. And, but it's not to be, his direct quote, it's not to be applied individually and is used as a picture of hormones. He's like, okay. I know exactly what's going on now. And so when I found that out, I was like, my mind was blown. And I was like, okay, how am I the only person who's ever asked this question from the guy who created the range? And it really makes me question now too. So with dosing of testosterone, the basic dosing for men specifically is roughly 100 to 200 milligrams. Where did that number come from and why are we using it? Well, going back to what you originally said, and we've talked about this in our in our medical groups and mastermind groups forever about the ranges. It's a lot of these were just arbitrary, right? And if you if you you may or may or may not be familiar, but they've lowered the ranges over the last couple of years just because. And why? Because our population is getting sicker and fatter and less healthier. So it's kind of like, well, let's make the airplane seats bigger because people are getting bigger. You, you know what I mean? So. It doesn't make sense. That's you, why I got that direct quote, and I can give it to you too. Yeah. So it used to be over. It used to be you know you know, 350 or 400 up to 1200. Now it's the top end is 900 and the, you know what I mean? So it's drifting downwards and thyroid's even, even worse because again, it's just a sample of a population, but it could be a sample of a sick population. And so there's variation from group to group and there's massive variation from individual to individual. So these ranges are just kind of arbitrary. And unfortunately, <laughs> medicine has gotten away from medicine, you know, treat the patient. You know, if you read a read uh, Dr. Broda Barnes' textbook from the 1800s. He was the, he was the thyroid master. And it's like, you know, you actually lay your hands on the patient, you talk to them, you examine them, and you could treat them clinically based on their symptoms. You don't treat numbers. Unfortunately, traditional medicine, that's all they do. They look at a number. It's like, oh, your number's in the normal range. You're fine. Yeah, doc, but I'm cold. I'm gaining weight. I'm fatigued. I'm, well, uh, your thyroid, your TSH is fine. Well, no, you, it's, it, it's an arbitrary number, and it doesn't matter what the TSH is. It matters what your free T3 is, and if you're symptomatic, if how, you're, how are your receptors working, how is your conversion. There's so much more to it, and that's what's been lost. Unfortunately, it's 
the art of medicine has been lost. They, they look at the numbers. So, oh, your testosterone is 301, you're normal. Um, yeah, but it's not optimal. There's a huge difference between normal and optimal. So these numbers of testosterone, it's like, oh, just give 100 or 200. And it's, it drives me nuts because there is no, yeah, it's a good starting point, but everybody's different. You have to look at their weight. You have to look at their lab values. You have to look at many other factors. And it drives me nuts. And unfortunately, I get a lot of patients who they're so fixated on the numbers. They're like, well, dog, what's, what's my T level, man? What's my T level? Or, you know, what's, what's this? I'm like, quit, quit worrying about the numbers. How do you feel? Let's talk about you. You know what I mean? So even the patients are fixated on numbers and it's, it's not that easy. You know, you get these internet gurus on there that have no medical experience. They're like, oh yeah, man, just do this, this, and this. And like, first of all, it doesn't work that way. Medicine is way more complex than that. And it's, it's not a, like I said, it's not a cookbook. It's, it's unfortunately yeah. it's a ton of variation and everybody's different. You know what I mean? So um, there's so some... isn't the AMA that would have created that that initial dosing I, or, or endocrinology society? It's possible. I, you know, honestly, I don't. It's. I think it's where it came from. I have no idea. I think it's just kind of arbitrary. I think it was an easy number to come up with. You know, they look at how it's the bottle. If you look at a bottle, they come in, just like most medications. It comes in a set strength. You know, say 100 milligrams per gram or 200 milligrams per gram. Like, oh, if you just do one cc, that's 100. That's that's easy. Let's start with that. You know, I mean, sometimes it's just as something as simple and arbitrary as that. You know, who knows. Um, but you know, yeah, I wanted to ask because it didn't sound right to me and I, I kind of agree with the number. I, I'm not sure that I don't agree with it. I just didn't understand where it came from. Yeah. I've never read it anywhere and I've been trying to dig and find it and I can't find out where that number came from and why we're using it. Yeah. I, I, I've never really looked into it either. I think, I think it just came up that way because of, it's an easy, it's an easy dose. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, can it work for a lot of guys? Sure. But you know, it's kind of like saying, you know, yeah, um, you know, a six pack will, will, will be enough to get most guys drunk. Well, yeah, but that's just an average. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, some guys need so 90 milligrams. The points is that 100 to 650 is our dose of testosterone. I've been using this talking point now because it's our clinically, uh, the, the clinical trials dosages that's been proven safe. And people keep getting fixated on the doses like you're talking about. And, oh, 200 is a bodybuilder dose or X dose is a whatever dose. Well, no, 650 is the clinically, you know, approved dose that's safe. So I keep trying to push this now because it's like the numbers mean nothing, right? Because if your RBCs are out of control on 50 milligrams, right, you as a doc can't give them 75 milligrams, right? Like it's dictated off of how they're feeling and then what their RBCs are and then how the you know the health markers are. Yeah, and again, everyone's different. And a lot of it has to do with, you know, your receptors and your, your genetics. You look at what's called a CAG repeat, you know, it, which means depending on your genetics, one guy may respond to x dose and another guy needs like way more than that to get the same response it's just it, there's just differences in, in variability and same with you know how they respond their their actual testosterone receptors one guy who's, float, who's walking around with a testosterone level of 500 feels f freaking amazing he's having great sex he's his workouts are awesome another guy 500 may feel like total shit so everybody's different you know one guy yeah. again because of those variations may only need an extra 60 milligrams of test to be fine. Another guy may need 200 because his receptors are shot. You know what I mean? So a uh, huge variability. And like you said, if depending on how they respond, you know, some guys' numbers jump up or their, their hemoglobin gets really high or they have side effects and they, they have to back down the dose. Um, 600, I, I never used to say, that's way too much. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, 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 but now, so the one milligram per pound, so say someone is 500 pounds, and you've moved beyond, so they're aromatizing the medication like uh, they never could be possible. And you, you're already at three or four hundred. It's not doing what you want it to do. They're severely obese. Is it beneficial to then just keep going up to that safest dose of the 650 that the cancer trials were done? You you definitely could. I, I don't think there's a need to do that because then you're going to more than likely come under fire and you're going to have side effects. I mean, most guys don't just don't need that much. Like you said, 600, that's like you said, cancers and like bodybuilder type stuff. And, you know, can you do it? Sure. But doesn't mean you should. And honestly, most of the time you just don't need to for medical, for medical reasons, you're getting an obese guy to improve his blood sugar and lose some visceral adiposity and, and just get healthier. You know, it's, it's a long game. It's going to take a good year or two, three years. And, and you don't need that much. You could put them on, you know, 100 to 200 milligrams, and you'll be just fine. And it, it'll, it'll take him, it'll take him down slowly and safely, uh, for sure. But you know, could you go higher? Yeah, you could, um, but you don't have to right out of the gate. Yeah, I wasn't sure if there was a strategy for someone that was severely obese, or, and this is one of my talking points of 
obviously this is the dose that's safe. And if you can do it safe and you have somebody that's severely obese or whatnot, the one milligram per pound of body fat kind of sounded or body weight kind of sounded like something that would be decent and getting it up to there. But obviously, right, we're talking about keeping it controlled and, and doing things in a safe manner, but also long term, right, for the, the negative health consequences of DHT and losing all your hair and all the acne or just, you know, whatever side effects you can get from pushing higher doses. For sure. Yeah, I mean, I've got several guys that are quite big. I've got, you know, and, and diabetic and have all kinds of issues. And, you know, Honestly, he's on, I think he, you know, is a pretty moderate dose. I want to say maybe 140 milligrams a week, you know, and it's working, oh, but, wow. and, he's, and he's doing fine. Actually, we tried to go a little higher and he, he, you know, his doctors got nervous because his hemoglobin went up a little bit, but he was fine. I wasn't worried about it, but so we're not going to go much higher. It's just going to, we're just going to give, it's the long game, you know, over time it'll work. You know what I mean? You don't have to go that high. Um, but um, yeah, for sure. So it works. It definitely works, but it, it takes time. It takes, you know, it can take a year or more before you start seeing, body composition changes and bone density changes and things like that. Yeah. And so one of my major questions um, that I wanted to ask was where do you see TRT going? So I, I see a trend that we're moving to, um, you know, roughly 200 milligrams of test and, you know, hundred milligrams of DECA and just kind of sitting on that kind of overall dosage and then working on other things around it. Where do you see the trend moving to where, I guess there's a, there's a, not necessarily a single protocol, but the industry is going to kind of lay down on a specific type of, of a protocol for the kind of population at large. Yeah, I don't know. And I don't care because I'm going to treat every patient different. Again, it's not a cookbook. You know what I mean? I don't really, you know, it, it doesn't matter because everyone's going to be different. So, you know, in general, are we going to be, or most of my guys somewhere between 100 and 200 milligrams a week? Yeah, for sure. Um, but occasionally I'll get an outlier. Someone needs a lot less, you know, 80, another guy maybe needs 200 or 220 or something for sure. Um, but it's a, you know, it's an individual, uh, dose response. And, and again, like you said, we're going to be working on a lot of other things at the same time where we tweaking nutrition, we're going to be doing some supplement strategies. We might be doing some peptide therapies, um, you know, some other things too. And all that plays into, plays into it too. And you, you monitor and you adjust and you tweak and, um, it's, it's a constant moving target. It's like a bunch of dominoes lined up. They all affect each other. So it's uh, that's what makes it interesting and fun. Yeah. That's what I kind of wanted to get to is I, I, I like to try to tease it out because we look at medicine as this cookie cutter thing, especially with TRT and we end up in these, um, these clinics who kind of treat everybody the same. And I'm really against it. And when it comes to TBI, we're so specialized and we need docs like you and, and Dr. Mark Gordon to be able to suss out the different problems. And obviously it doesn't, Oh, just take this 200 milligrams and leave, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> you've like for me, I've got TBI. I have all, I've tons of, of cortisol stuff going on, growth hormone, just all kinds of stuff falling apart. Sure. And I have to work with somebody who's you know able to do all of that. And I've got to split it all apart with different docs, but it's been difficult to find that person. There's no way to just put it all in one, you know, kind of protocol specifically. Oh, for sure. I've, I, let's just put it this way. I've, uh, I hate to, hate to say this, but unfucked a lot of patients who've come to me from these mills and clinics who just put them on this cookbook protocol and then they got all jacked up and I have to fix it. So, um, it, it just doesn't work that way. They, they found, they find me and they find like some of the other docs in my mastermind group who, actually dig deep and, and do it right and, and fix them because it's like you said, it says, Oh, just do this, this, this. And there you go. And like, it doesn't work that way, guys. It'd be, it'd be great if it did, but it doesn't, you know? So, um, so you're absolutely spot on with that. It's, it's not a cookie cutter thing. And that's where people get in trouble, unfortunately. Now, one of my last questions is in terms of, you know, I don't really know, I haven't done as much research on, on, on women. Um, What's the kind of standard testosterone and like progesterone estrogen dosing that, that they're doing? Yeah, I treat a lot of women too. I mean, I definitely, um, tons of guys, but I treat a lot of women. Um, and with all the above peptides and hormones and everything else too. So, um, fortunately, uh, I'd say most, as women go through perimenopause, the, the first two hormones that drop are progesterone and testosterone. So those are usually the first two that I'm correcting. Uh, and eventually I get, but I get a lot of women who, of course, who are fully menopausal and then they need all three and maybe they need, they need thyroid and all this other stuff too. So, uh, progesterone is pretty, usually pretty simple. Um, 
I prefer an oral oral formation right before bed because that does have a sedating effect. Really? It promotes sleep and relaxation. It's almost like a GABA uh, response, and um, okay. that, that's why you'll probably read about a lot of guys with TBI, even though progesterone is not really good for men. Occasionally, if they got really severe TBI, it, it acts as a neurosteroid in the brain, anti-inflammatory effects, etc., and, and, and protecting the neurons, etc., but it has a lot of protecting effects in the brain. But for women, it's awesome because it is that calming effect. It helps it helps with sleep, it balances out the estrogen. Uh, so that's an easy one. Um, and so, and my testosterone, you know, I have a lot of women on that and they, they love it and it works great. Um, obviously much lower doses than, than, than guys. Now yeah. with guys and with they women, can use creams, right? you could do, well, yeah, same with guys. A lot of guys do really, really well on cream, which is actually probably the most physiologic way to give it. Cause it's, you can give it daily and keep those dosages in the perfect range constantly and adjust on the fly. So a lot of guys love the cream. Um, but women love it too. And you, you apply it daily. Um, but they can do a lot of my women do the shots too, but with women, it's typically, typically once a week, most of my guys are dosing two or three times a week to get, to keep that optimal response and not avoid those big spikes and drops. But my women typically once a week is good. And they're again, much lower, you know, anywhere from like five milligrams for something, right? Yeah. Like 10, yeah. 10 to 20 milligrams. I occasionally get a woman up to 25, but most of my women are like 10 to 15 to start and, and see how they oh, respond. Yeah. Much lower, but they, they work. So that free is like 1.9 or something, right? For my women. I mean, optimally get them in the three to four range is good. Um, Okay. For free. Yeah. But again, it, it just varies. You know, again, if they're, they're feeling great at two, I'm happy. You know what I mean? As long as they're feeling good, their symptoms are improved. I, I'm not too worried about the numbers. Same with the guys. Yeah. But, I wanted to ask because I'm getting younger women who are roughly 23 to like 30 who have all the signs of hypogonadism mm. and I'm talking to them and they don't have anybody that knows what they're doing. And I'm like, okay, this is all hormone stuff. You're telling me. I'm yeah. Like, this is not brain stuff or you know, it's not psychosomatic. I mean, it's right. straight up. You've got hormone problems, and just because you're a young woman doesn't mean jack to me. It, I it doesn't it, unless you have your levels checked. I don't believe the doctor's trying to give you SSRIs and and other you know, drugs like that. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's it's the same with guy and guys, but I see that all the time too. I'm getting younger and younger men and women coming in with hormonal dysfun dysfunction, and it's it's frightening. But it, it unfortunately has a lot to do with. I mean, we live in a very toxic world. You know, all the bullshit in our foods and the plastics and the emf and you know shitty food and stress and with women they're on these birth control pills their whole you know from day one you know for, for a decade and jacks them up so iud's and things and you know i'm see, like i said i'm seeing young you know guys in their 30s and you know, it used to be just guys older guys you know but now i'm seeing young guys and like you said young women coming in who have hormonal dysfunction and like what is going on here so some of them need some yeah. Uh, changes their medications or they need a detoxification program or they just need to get off the damn birth control pills uh, or whatever, you know? So yeah, I see and it all. I said all nor testosterone drugs, right? What's that? Those are 19 nor testosterone drugs, aren't they? Which ones? Uh, the, uh, birth control medication. Oh, the birth control. Well, most, yeah, the, some of them are. Yeah. A lot of them are just the, uh, the, the combination, you know, combination synthetic estrogen, progesterone product, norethrone, norethrone mm -hmm. or Yaz or, low overall or all these other, there's a million of them out there. Um, but the problem is they there's still legally prescribed synthetic estrogen. Oh yeah. Well, pr look at Prempro, you know, that's a synthetic estrogen that's been around forever. Um, for that's still legally allowed to be prescribed. Prempro. I think it's still out there or Premer and maybe, um, I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't use it. I use bioidentical it causes cancer. Doesn't it? That's what they studied back. You know, women were on that for, for decades. And they did that WHI study, uh, back in 02. Yeah. And that's when it got women all freaked out and got off the hormones. But again, then they, when they reanalyzed the data years later, realized it was completely wrong. Um, and, oh, really? yeah, and plus, you know, again, we use bioidentical estro estradiol, which has never yeah. had any problems. It's, that's why we use it because the, the synthetic stuff is terrible. It, it does. It can promote cancer. That's why and, I asked you that question because it's just my natural feedback. Of yeah. The whole TRT thing. I just know that mm -hmm. we're supposed to be using bioidenticals yep. for everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's the only way to go. Yeah, this well, is I didn't even know that it existed, but also that it, it explains a lot of, you know, what's going on in terms of young women who are getting prescribed, you know, birth control and other sorts of medications that, obviously have problems and they're going to lead to, you know, significant issues, especially if you're using like a DECA only cycle that it's like some 19 Nord drug and all your hair's falling out and you have no libido and your, your whole life is messed up. 
I've had a lot, I've had several women who I've taken off their birth control and, and, and they now feel so much better. Um, some I've had to replace with bioidentical progesterone and testosterone. Some I have not, and they just feel heads and tails better. Um, you know, they get off that stuff, that, that abnormal suppression, the synthetic drugs. It's just, it's amazing. Huge difference. Wow. Well, so I know you've had a long day. Um, if you wouldn't mind plugging your uh, clinic and tell people how they can find you. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Happy to jump on. And um, if any of your uh, followers have questions or want to reach out or have, you know want to uh, ask quite clinical questions, I'm happy to help or jump on another podcast. But I'm at DrEricPrimex.com, D-R-E-R-I-C-P-R-I-M-E-X. And I'm all over I have tons of video, free videos you can watch on Instagram and uh, YouTube, a lot of educational stuff. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out and connect. And if I can help in any way, shape, or form, let me know. Awesome. And since we're in the whole, uh, uh, situation that we're in, you're doing telemedicine currently. I am. Yeah. I've got a lot of out of state patients right now. Oh, wow. And is that going to keep going, uh, for the time being? Definitely. It's growing every day. I'm actually, um, adding, uh, additional licensures in other States as I go and trying to catch up with all these patients. And, uh, so the demand is there uh, for sure, and it's it's definitely growing. Oh wow! And I, is that CDC um, regulations or whatnot are still in effect? And I, I for telemedicine, it's not going away, right? I mean, you're going to be able to yeah. continue to do out of state treatment and all oh, that. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's not going. It's it, telemedicine's here to stay for sure. Um, I mean, obviously, I prefer to see. And prior to all this stuff, I'd have people you know come in and from out of state and and see me physically at least once, but now, yeah, I can, you know, I can do telemedicine from anywhere. So, um, for sure. So, you know, if you have, you know, like I said, I'm happy to help if you've got clients and people that are looking for someone, I can, I mean, I can do a telemedicine consultation and treat them, treat them from afar. That's what I do every day. It's, it's, uh, it's awesome. And, uh, met a lot of cool people and helped a lot of people out. Yeah. And one last part, um, in terms of the whole insurance thing, you're, you're doing the whole concierge medicine thing, right? Yeah, it's it's all it's all uh, direct to patient, you know, cash only. I don't deal with insurance or anything. It's just simpler. It's easier. Um, works much better that way. So I just I set everybody up. I can I can send lab requisition forms. Uh, get my patients. They'll go do their lab work and do a consultation with me over over the over the computer, and then I can prescribe like my compounding pharmacies. They ship anywhere all over the state, so I could do everything uh, digitally and remotely and uh, legally, and it's uh, works pretty seamlessly. Awesome. Yeah, I wanted to ask because it gets kind of in the weeds and that sort of thing, but it's pretty important when it comes to hormone replacement, in my opinion, and why insurance anywhere near that. No. Because um, they don't know what they're talking about. And I read up on a United Healthcare thing. They're talking about 100 milligrams every two weeks of testosterone for men. <laughs> exactly. You don't know what you're talking about? Like, no, like, this is not a thing. So I, I wanted to ask you specifically because, you know, obviously I've, I talk to people all over the nation and whatnot. And, um, you know, the whole uh, situation or whatnot um, allows you flexibility to do your job. So it does. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, I, well, you know, I'll let you get to it. I really do appreciate you uh, you taking the time to speak with me. Um, if you wouldn't mind shooting me an email with that, uh, um, the MP3 of what we did, and I'll do some editing and chop it all up, make it sound nice. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate I appreciate ha appreciate you having me on. I'm I'm glad you're you know spreading the word and trying to help out other veterans and other people. It, you know, people like you help help everyone, help all of us to kind of help people get help. Basically, you know, point them in the right direction and you get them in touch with people uh, mm -hmm. and physicians like myself who can help them clinically. And you know, it all grows together. So I appreciate what you're doing. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Thank you so much, Doctor Eric. You have a really good uh, weekend. Hey, thanks. You too.